Hey everybody, what's going on? It is your girl Dobby Davenport. You're tuned in to Dobby Davenport Live. Oh my God. I just like to even hear myself saying that, okay? Like you already, you know me for anyone that's tuning in for the first time. Thank you so much for checking out the show. People ask me all the time, exactly what is Dobby Davenport Live all about? Dobby Davenport Live is a television show that solely revolves around love. We have a cooking segment, we have an entertainment segment, we have a fashion segment, health and fitness, travel, just a, oh, we also have a wonderful youth project that's just an effervescent, it's one of my babies. Today's Youth Talking has been in existence for the last 20 years and it's also a part of Dobby Davenport Live. One of the things that I pride myself in is bringing people, places, and things into the viewer's home that are going to inspire you and, and motivate you to do things that you've always thought about doing in your life. Each week, I have a guest come on or I take you into a special place and, and, and you get a chance to experience what I'm experiencing. You get a chance to feel the love and passion that I feel when I meet an individual, like the individual I'm going to introduce you to tonight. Well, actually, my guest tonight is not only one of my dearest friends, but she's also one of the most brilliant people that I've ever met in my life. Peggy Blue is a force to be reckoned with, and when I tell you that I know that you'll be inspired by this woman, her, her legacy is, is beyond anything that I've ever personally been involved in. She started out as a young child, and a lot of the viewers that are home, what I love about Dobby Davenport Live also, is that this is the show that you can watch with your children. This is the show that families can gather around the screen and say, let's be inspired together. When I was a child coming up, television for me was just that. We got, we wrapped around the, not wrapped around the television, but we sat in our living room after having dinner and we watched shows that inspired us. So I'm gonna introduce you to the amazing Pe Peggy Blue, I'm tongue tied here, the amazing Peggy Blue, and we're gonna walk you down uh, memory lane, but we're going to walk you down with some history that you are not going to believe. What's up, girl? Hi, I'm getting tongue-tied just thinking about it. I'm like, this is my Peggy <laughs> Blue. What's going on? How, How are, you? are you? Hey, let me scoot a little closer to my Peggy Blue. <laughs> so first, Peggy, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, I'm so you, honored. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm so, uh, uh, actually, this is, this is a gift and a blessing. Oh, Peggy, you. you you really, I, when I was reading some of the information, I have some things I want to share with the viewer. When I went down the history of Peggy Blue, <laughs> I, I had tears in my eyes, Peggy. Aww. When I listen to your music, I'm inspired. Oh, thank you. When, I, I'm, when I'm with you and you know, we interact with one another, I, I feel motivated. Well, just can you give the viewer and I, like, I, I've read my history on you and we've discussed so many things, but. Will you share with the viewer how Peggy Blue got started? Where did all this start? Um, at birth. <laughs> <laughs> you, the, your mother said she came out singing. My grandmother, <laughs> and I'm going to tell this, this is a quick story, and you, you may not believe it, but it is absolutely the truth because she asked me how it started. When did it yes, start? Yes. Well, my mom went into labor 197 years ago. Whatever. <laughs> And the doctor came in, and I, the baby was not dilated, Miss Blue, uh, and you've got another three to four hours. The doctor turns around to walk out the door. I pop out in complete. You know, when children What do you mean born, you popped out complete? The entire... Peggy Blue? Me. Peggy Blue just came out. It came out, bam. And so my mother's here, Wow. and I'm there, and the umbilical cord, of course, is still attached, but my grandmother said, my eyes opened, and I went... <gasps> And so my grandmother said, oh, to my mom, look, Nick. She came in, my mother's name is, nickname is Nick. Uh -huh. She came into the world saying, look, she's singing. So that's where the phrase came from. She came wow. into the world singing. I turned professional at three on the dining room table of the mayor of my town. Because that's when he paid me. I sang for his inauguration. At three years old? At three. And you know what's great is that, as I was just saying, as I was introducing you, I like when the viewer is able to, because just hearing that story, there are a lot of young prodigies that are out there, like yourself. In this, in this day and age, there are a lot of young people. I've seen some on Facebook and yeah. Instagram, and some people share. They're not a, tr you know, well, yeah, there are a lot of them, but kids that have these wonderful voices, and a lot of times parents, oh, they're too young, they're too this. You never. 
You're never. You're never too young to share your gift. Um, but the one thing that my mother m made sure that I did, yes. even at three, was hone it because my mother was a vocal coach. Oh. And she trained singers, among a lot of other things that she did. So, yeah, if your child has whatever that gift is, make sure that you hone that. Yes. Because it's a part of them. Wow. It's who they are. Mm. You know, so. I know a lot of your history started out, you got your start in church. Oh, definitely. You were just a teenager, you moved to New York. Yeah. So tell us about, like, because there are a lot of young people, and a lot of people as a whole, like some of my great, when I go to church, for mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. which I love, and to One Church LA, I love you so much. Pastor <laughs> Teray, you're amazing. On my One Church family, they're very supportive. They email me all the time. I love you guys. I'm going with you on Sunday. Are you better? Yeah. Maybe Sunday. I love my you still, you're supposed to ask me going this Sunday. I, well, because I had to go to my church. I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I go to New mm. Christ Memorial, uh, and when I don't show up and I'm not on the choir, uh -huh. they kind of look at me like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on here? What's up with that? You what's are the soprano right there on the first row. What's going so. on? <laughs> when I go to church so many times, like for me, like the st the choir. Mm -hmm is what gets the spirit just all inside of me, gets me motivated, oh, just definitely. excites me. So tell us about your, your start in the church. Tell us about the singer and, and what emotions were there. Mm, mu music is, somebody wrote the song that said, music is my way of life. Yes. Music is such a part of me that if I mm. don't have it in my life, if I couldn't yes, do it, yes. I would surely die. Yes. But I mean die. Of course. Um, it's what I live for. Yes. It's what I live to do. On choir rehearsal night, when I was a child, I would be sitting because my mother was mm -hmm. one of the choir directresses, and I'd be there. And see, I was good at what I did, so they allowed me to sing not only with the kids' choir, but with the adult choir oh, wow. as well. Because, oh, she, wow. you know, she taught me and I listened. She and was learned. like, you're going to let my daughter sing with the adult choir. <laughs> well, no. she didn't. She just brought me up. Yes. And, uh, and I used to also be the, because I played piano, too. Ah. Uh, and I used to do keyboard. Now I don't do play anymore. Play I was gonna no, ask you because, you child, okay. if I broke a nail right I now. I was going to say, do you play piano for those nails, upset. girl? I was going to ask you that. You're no. a mind reader. Oh, homie, don't play that homie, don't no play more. That I no play more. in my house, but not you out anymore. You moved to New York as a teenager? I was going to be 14 and I went because my uncle who was a bishop okay went to mm. um, he was doing his convention mm -hmm. and they needed another singer but I had also gotten a job with the Nat Lewis singers and they were on their way to Las Vegas and you and were 14 years old I was 14 so my uncle said I w and my mother gave him permission I was gonna say along with I was her. gonna say to anybody at home now don't well, because take he was my guardian that you can leave home at 14 no you can't had a guardian you, okay no because listen you he had <laughs> yeah. he said to them I will let her go but you have to send with her a tutor because she's got to go to school yes and a yes. nanny yes somebody to take full charge yes. and that's how I went oh beautiful so and okay. I used to you know mm. because we were in the nightclubs and I was so underage they would say, go on stage and sing, and then they would, I would have to go in the corner in a separate room. Wow. So I couldn't fraternize with anybody, because I was a kid. Sure. You know, so the the woman would be there with my schoolwork, and I tried to hate her, but I couldn't, because <laughs> she was so kind. <laughs> she tried to hate her. I really her. did. I was like, I don't want to do this now. I got to sing, and I got to get revved up. And she's like, you better rev up this math. <laughs> when you started out with singing, Peggy, and you, I know you did some background vocals, right? Yeah. So you worked with some of the great Stevie Wonder, Luther Vandross, Bob Dylan. Tell me what that was like, because you're such a front ground girl, front, what was it, background, front ground, yes, girl to me. So tell me about backing up these greats, because you're a great, and you end up evolving and having so many people work behind you. How did that feel? I call that deliciousness Ooh, <laughs> ra, la, ba, ba, ba. that's why <laughs> that yeah that, oh my god that is it is because you can just t let me tell you something when i was in the background with barbara streisand who has been my idol oh my since god. i was a snap oh big my god. that was my, i did her 2000 millennium show barbara in streisand barbara streisand is like the epitome of beyond greatness oh my god yes then there's Burt Baccarat, yes. who I not only sang back up, but I was 
-hmm. I was the soloist. Yes. You know, on the road. We did the L.A. Philharmonic, the New York Philharmonic, the blah, blah. Fil How did they Every find out studio. about you? Well, he was in my studio. It's one of my clients. Okay, okay. <laughs> That'll do and it. He, yeah, we were doing a, a, a record. But how uh, did they find him. out? How did they find out? How did Stevie Wonder and all these people, how did they find Peggy Blue? Just working. Okay. From one mm. place to the next. And Stevie Wonder, here's what happened with that. I, a few years, well, not a few years ago, quite a while just ago. Just today. When <laughs> When I, before ago. I moved here, we did this thing called Motown, uh, Motown Returns to the Apollo. Mm -hmm. and, and it was at the Apollo Theater in New York, which is where I'm from. What now was, not to interject, but was your friend that we were with the other day, Kiki Shepard, no. was she hosting at that time? No, 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 no. Okay. No. Uh, Bill Cosby was hosting okay. at that time. And I'm sorry to interject. I'm sorry no, about it's that. fine yeah. because here's the story about Bill Cosby. Because the, uh, uh, the guy I was with at that time made me late. I was going to say, don't give me too much of a story. No, about Bill for the rehearsal. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. And no, when no, I no, came sorry, in Bill. and came up the aisle, Bill Cosby was on stage. The rehearsal had already started. Okay. And he asked me why I was late, and I told him. And he gave me the most profound thing of anybody. He looked me right in the face and quietly he said, anyone who doesn't respect you enough, and your job enough to put you in time. And he did like that. And he said a few other things that I won't say. And but yes, that resonated yes. with me. Okay. Well, Stevie Wonder was on the show because ah. it was all Motown people. Ah. And I was the background singer for if you were on that show, mm. I was one of the background singers. Oh. So that's why. And then Carol oh. Dennis, who, yes. Carl Dennis took me to meet him personally. Stevie Wonder? Yes. Yes. And, oh, God, it was just amazing. He's an effervescent person. My yeah. son and I had the opportunity. We were at West Angeles Church back in 2013, and we had the opportunity to meet Stevie Wonder. And my son, who's in the music business, and Miles, I know that you're tuning in. Uh, he always watches on YouTube from Vegas when we put the, put the live link on the next day. But yeah. Just meeting Stevie Wonder for, was, it felt great to me, but it was, he's one of my son's musical idols. Mine I too. grew up listening to Stevie. Music has been my life. Mm -hmm. I, you know, was in a marching band and all that, but, so I, I appreciate what you're saying about Stevie Wonder, and I know from being a, an artist like yourself, that had to be profoundly he's inspiring. No matter what he does, he could sing that chord right there. He could <laughs> say the, uh, Yes. The blue and you and you just go. Yes. I, hey, I have in my show, I have Stevie Wonder in I Wish that starts out one of my shows. I opened um, one. Of, I, I open a lot of shows with that. But he's the epitome of greatness. He's the one me. person that shows that you can get overcome any kind of adversity. Also, Absolutely. think about he's done all that. But even though we know that. You take away one sense and the others magnify. Well, yeah. And he's spoken about that in interviews himself before, that how, you know, he had to tap into his other senses, sense yeah, of smell, sense of feel, absolutely. sense of love. I remember when he first came out, I was in Vegas. I was a kid ah. at that time, the first time I heard him. I, I worked at a club called the Nevada Club. Hmm. <laughs> downtown Vegas. Downtown, 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 oh, downtown Vegas. Oh, yeah. Right downtown okay. Vegas. Okay. That's where we were working. Wow. And I heard this guy with this harmonica and I was like my god who yeah. is that and somebody said that they call him little Stevie Wonder and I was like what well, can we see him because I heard him on the radio right after the gig and I mean it was the most amazing thing and he would stand with it and he always did like this from side to side uh, oh yes. yeah and he he didn't he see you see but you. he can see all of you wow. he can see straight through yes. you yes and that's a good qual a good sense to have because I'm sure doing all the things that you've done, you've encountered some very, very s organically wonderful people. And mm -hmm. I'm sure that you've experienced some people that were a little unscrupulous. So tapping into that sense that Stevie had, not being able to physically see someone, mm -hmm. I'm sure that you've had to utilize your various senses as well to know who to do business with and who not to do business with. And obviously you've made some great selections. Let's talk about your history on Broadway. Oh. Oh my God. That like. <laughs> oh my God. Cake. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't wait to get back there. I want to go back. 
okay. and do another Broadway. P I played the roles of, first of all, I did, I don't know if a lot of people, you know The Wiz, uh, choreographed by the great Georges Faison. Um, and I mean, uh, and the Uncola, who called himself Mother, the Uncola. Oh yeah, baby. It was amazing. And I didn't go to audition for that show. I was vocal coaching a girlfriend of mine mm. because she wanted to go audition for Eveline. And we traded because she was an acting coach. Hold on one second. I'm going to ask my camera person, can we bring that camera just a little bit off? It's live television, so I like to ask my off, off, off Peggy's head just a little bit. Bring it off just a bit. Can we wind that side up somewhat for me? On, on Peggy? Can we wind that up on Peggy? Thank you. Um, anyway, it's live television, so I always like to. It's okay. I like I, that's what I do. And and and, and I like to make it, it right. And I'm a real live girl. I'm a live performer, so I'm I'm right there in the cut with you. We're ya. taking you back to we're taking you back to Broadway. I want to go back. I'm going back. I don't know in what yet. Yes. I went with Mimi Lucario Dumbia is her name. Yes. And she was the acting coach. She taught me acting, and I taught her voice. And when it was time to go that day, she called me up and she said, I can't, I can't go, you have to go. And I was like, are you nuts? You have to go. Yes. And she said, I can only go if you come with me. I went, okay, fine. Well, I go there. Turns out the <laughs> doorman and security guard had just been to one of my shows that night, <gasps> that Saturday <gasps> night. The doorman had? Yes, huh? he had come to my oh, show. And I in the pit fun. was oh. Linda Twine, the keyboard player mm. and the conductor. Mm. And he, m Mimi didn't make it, but he <sighs> went there and he said, Linda, guess who I've got back here? And I was like, don't do that, because I didn't come to audition for anything. Don't tell her. Don't do that. And he said my name, and she said, oh, push you out on stage. And I was like, uh, you know what? You're in time out. <laughs> <And> <laughs> you told that the comedian that the other day, that Myron, you said, oh, we were at the Motion Picture Awards <laughs> event. Yes, I did. And now you said you're in time out. I won't put anybody in time out if you do that bad So you thing. told the doorman he was in time you out? You are in time out. And he got so tickled, but I went out and she said, sing the, and I sang uh, Auntie M's song. Oh my God. Uh, the feeling we once had. Wow. And from the back of the house, the two producers start walking up, Ken and 